Hello, we continue our learning of Biblical Hebrew with Jonah 1.9, and we continue our learning of Hebrew pronouns. Pronouns are words that stand in place of a noun, like I, you, they, he, she, it, and so forth. Rather than having to say Ken Shank every time, you can say he or him, or I can say I, or you can say you. It's, it just shortens things up. A pronoun stands in place of a noun. Um, so let's go ahead, see if you can pronounce that first line of Jonah 1.9. Here's how I would pronounce it. Vayomer Elo, uh, sorry, Elehem, <laughs> I was thinking Elohim at first, but that's not Elohim, that's Alehem, Alehem, Ivri, Hebrew, I'm a Hebrew. Um, notice he doesn't say I'm an Israelite, he says I'm a Hebrew. Uh, Paul uh, says he's a Hebrew of the Hebrews as well. Um, doesn't say I'm a Jew. That's, anyway, I'm getting into interpretation of the New Testament. And the last word of this line is anoki. So, vayomer alehem ivri anoki. Okay, so the translation is, and he said, I should have stopped and asked if you remember that. We've seen that over and over again. I almost said, well, let's just nail that down and learn it in this video. But I'll give you a little time to continue seeing it before we say, now let's 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 put that in our memory permanently. Vayomer, and he said, is the translation of that. And he said, now L we've had several times. It means two. It's a preposition. And then hem, for the first time, let's learn hem. Hem is a pronomial suffix. It's a suffix because it's attached, right? It's not a separate word. Like anoki, we're going to learn that anoki is I. It's independent. It stands on its own. But hem is a suffix. It's tacked onto something. It goes together with it. And it's a pronoun because it means them, to them. It's being used as an object pronoun here, to them. And he said to them, that is, Jonah said to the sailors, Quote, he said, Ivri, a Hebrew, Anoki. Ivri, Anoki. A Hebrew, am I. The am is not there. It's inferred. Anoki is one of at least two different ways to say I. You might have said, why do they have two different ways to say I? I don't know. Why do languages do whatever they do? Languages do whatever they do. And there ain't nothing your English teacher can do about it. I mean, the stuff they taught you in English is really convention, right? It's not the law. It's not God's law for sure. Um, so we, the people, we, the people, we decide what language does. And the Hebrews, as they spoke, and there are different dialects of Hebrew, no doubt, in different places. It's hard for us to track these things now. But uh, anoki is one word for I. And I don't know how, you, how you're going to remember that. Um, uh, maybe the Hirak Yod, uh, we're going to eventually see that Hirak Yod is, is a, um, I think we've already seen it, haven't we? We've already seen that that's a pronomial suffix for I or me. So maybe the Hirak Yod helps you remember that it's I. But this is, a, this is not a suffix, right? It's not on the end of a word. It's a word all by itself. It's standing by itself. It's independent. Um, you know, have you ever you had children who got to a certain age and they didn't want, you know, Dad, let me off a little bit ahead of the school so I can walk on my own. Dad, don't kiss me in the high school parking lot. You know, um, anyway, but uh, <laughs> that didn't sound right. But you know what I mean? A little peck on the cheek before your uh, son or daughter goes into to school. Okay, never mind. But um, uh this is independent. It stands on its own. And so anoki, we had ata, which means you, uh, I believe in the previous verse. Now we have anoki, which means I. All right, here's a second line. See if you can pronounce it. Here's how I would pronounce it. Uh, Ve'et Yahweh uh, Elohe Hashemayim Ani Yare. Um, anything you recognize in that line? I think you should recognize the Vav. You should recognize the et. You should recognize the name of God. You should recognize the word for God. Really, you should recognize the seri yod on the end of the word for God. You should recognize he patak doubling. You should rec well ayam. You might not recognize. Um, it's actually a dual. They thought of the skies as being twins, twin skies double skied. So you have singular plural. There also is this I am ending that's a dual. You don't need to know that. Um, ani, uh, this is the other variation. If anoki is one word for I, 
Ani is another one, and it has a Hirak Yod. So maybe the Hirak Yod is what you should memorize uh, from, from, from this as the I or, or me part. And then this seems to be something like fear. So uh, so notice that the word order is not the typical word order. Normally you have the verb first and then the subject. Uh, but here you have the, the what's called the object first. Do you, know, do you remember et? Et is the direct object marker. It says direct object approaching. And the direct object is what comes after, you know, uh, Yahweh said, what? You know, whatever the answer to that is, that's the, the direct object. So Yahweh is first because he's important and for emphasis, but the subject is I. I am fearful of Yahweh, the God of the skies or the God of the heavens is what this is saying. So the things that you should remember, Vav is and, Et is Et is the direct, uh, uh, direct definite, direct object marker. The et says direct object approaching, and the direct object of the verb is Yahweh, or Adonai, if you want to uh, not say the name of Yahweh. So I fear Yahweh, the God of the skies, is what Jonah says. And Yahweh, the God of the skies, I fear. Um, uh, El Elohe is the masculine plural construct of Elohim, which is the plural uh, for God treated as a singular. Um, Seri Yod is a uh, masculine plural construct ending. So the God of, the of comes from the fact that this is construct. And then the skies, hey, Patak doubling is the word for the. Didn't put that down for review, but hopefully you caught it. And then we have Ani. This is another variation for the word I. We had in the previous slide anoki which can mean i and then we have ani which can mean i uh, i don't know if you ever knew amy grant's song el shaddai el shaddai el eliona adai um ani well no actually it's a different song she did that's that has hebrew too she did another song in which she says i love you in several different languages and hebrews is stuck into that ani ohevet she says ani is i and ohevet is i love uh but anyway, and I love you, that is. Um, so, okay, so um, Ani is another word. Fearful, this seems to be, uh, this is, I'm not quite sure what, how to analyze this. It seems to be some kind of an uh, an adjective. It's being used as an adjective. I'm fearful is the way I translated it. Um, some some sources have it as a verb, Some, uh, but it doesn't exactly look like a participle. I wanted to I wanted to say, well, maybe it means I am fearing, but that, anyway, it's not a normal participle. So don't worry about it, because I'm not. Um, I am fearful is the way that I, uh, decided to translate it with am being uh, understood. Okay, last line. See if you can pronounce this. Here's how I would pronounce it. Asher, asher asa et hayam, the et hayabasha. Okay, so asher you should know, right? Um, you don't know asa yet, but it's a very important verb, um, meaning to do or to make. It means, uh, this word here means he made. Um, uh, you should know et, what is that? Direct, direct, definite direct object marker. Hey, Patak doubling. The, and Yam we've seen before is the C. Vav again, and et, direct, definite, ob, de, definite direct object marker. Uh, hey, Patak doubling is the, and Yabisha is dry land. So the translation is, I, I serve the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. So he's in charge of this water you're having troubles with. So, uh, oh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't do the stuff you should know. Well, I told you the stuff you should know. This is the relative pronoun who I share. You should know that. This is he made definite direct object marker direct object approaching, uh, and it is in, fee in fact direct, isn't it? Hey, patak doubling, um, definite direct object marker and definite article there. Hey, patak doubling and yabasha. I would guess it's a feminine word, right? Because of kamatz hey at the end. I would guess it's feminine. Uh, and that's a saluk saying, this verse is over, and this is the last accented syllable. And of course, a sof basuk says, the verse is over. This has been Jonah 1, 9, I believe it is, where we've looked at some uh, pronouns. We've learned, so we now know kind of two independent pronouns, ata, which means you, singular, masculine. We know ani and anoki, which mean I. And we know a number of pronomial suffixes. We know holem vav, which means his or him. We know nu, uh, which means us. 
Uh, I've mentioned Hirk Yod, which means me or my. Um, we've seen Ka, uh, a kaf with a kamatz in it, which means you, masculine singular. Um, and what else? We had Hem. For the first time, we've had Hem. So I think I think we're about ready for me to summarize some pronouns for you. But um, I'll decide whether I do that in the next video or whether I do it uh, the one after that. So this has been Jonah 1.9.